Okay, everyone, welcome to the <coughs> Jenkins Infrastructure Public Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 12th of July, 2022 today. So today we have your servitor, Damien Duportal. We have Hervé Lemer, Mark White, Stéphane Merle, and Bruno Erharton from the community team at CloudBeats. One, two, three, four, five, everyone is there. I'm okay. Yes. Let's get started with uh, announcement. So it seems that the weekly is in a good direction. At least I can see it available on Jenkins.io website. Not sure for the whole checklist, but as usual, I assume in a few hours it will be uh, validated. Is that correct, Mark? Sorry, ask the question again. I was working okay. on the Jenkins weekly release. Oh, good. You're asking about that. I was multitasking. That's very dangerous. <laughs> So yes, the weekly release has been published to Artifactory, so to the repository. The change log is not published. I just completed an edit on it. We'll push it. And there's more to do on the checklist. So, so checklist is not yet complete, but um, the coming soon. No, no issues detected. But no issues detected. Nice. Right. Are there other announcements? Uh, so, for interest sake, mm -hmm. we are in a we are still in the in the phase of further adopting Java 11 and further updating dependencies. 2.359, for instance, has many Java JavaScript updates in it of various component libraries. Uh, that's that's good. We like that. There may be some instability or some surprises there as those JavaScript libraries are updated. Previously, our dependabot configuration was incorrect. It was not detecting um, JavaScript updates that were needed. The Alex Brandis corrected that mistake and we suddenly got a flurry of, you need to update this JavaScript and this and this, and those are all good things. Uh, likewise, uh, if not 2359, then the next one, will upgrade from Jetty 9 to Jetty 10. And the Jetty 9 to Jetty 10 upgrade is, is a key component of Jenkins. Jetty is the, the thing that provides HTTP services for us. It, it handles HTTP and HTTPS. And, and that's a good thing because the Jetty project has declared the end of community support for Jetty 9. They're still willing to support us, but because the Jenkins project is a big deal for them, but we like that we're switching to Jetty 10. It's a good thing. Those, that's all the news that I had. Many thanks. So that means that for the upcoming two or three weeks, if folks you see instabilities on infra CI, the Jenkins, it's not you. And don't hesitate to ask for help because that might end on reporting an issue on the weeklies. Right, yeah, so we've actually got two installations, right? Weekly.ci.jenkins.io is a publicly visible instance of weekly that doesn't do much. Infra.ci is a privately visible, but does an awful lot for us. Absolutely. Okay. On that area, that based on the work that Basil and many other contributors did recently, I wanted to raise the subject, uh, so that's alpha announcement ask note. Um, I will want to try GDK 17 on Infra CI as soon as possible. Um, I'm not sure though if this would impact, uh, how could we avoid impacting weekly CI or if we should, because it does nothing. But my proposal would be to start switching our instances that follow the weekly release to use the weekly in GDK 17. Mm -hmm. um, Brazil on community told there is no known issue. Uh, I thought that, that we would have some issues. So if it's uh, ready, let's get started as soon as possible. That will provide insights. Well, I, I would love to see weekly.ci.jenkins.io switch to Java 17. I've got an unreported issue that mm -hmm. I need to investigate further when I switch my production instance from JDK 11 to JDK 17, I got surprising messages in my agent logs, but I can't duplicate it. 
and, okay. and I've tried with a brand new creation, I still can't duplicate it. So nothing for you to note here, because I don't know of a repeatable issue. I just happen to have a thing that I need to investigate further when time allows. Once I have it repeatable or understand the conditions, I can then raise an issue with it, but I don't have any repeatable issue yet. Okay. Um, the challenge for us will still be, <clears throat> we will have to add GDK 17 next to GDK 11 on our agents. For the virtual machines, it's not an issue because we are, it's already the case. So we only should update the EC2 templates to start the agent with OPT GDK 17 instead of GDK 11. So for virtual machines, that will be really easy. However, that might require us to add uh, more content to update our Docker container images. But that effort will be required no matter when we do it. If it's not now, it will be in two or three months. So I propose that we can get started on this one. Is that, is that challenge clear for everyone? I like it and I think we take it relatively low priority, but yeah, I like for mm -hmm. me with that we, we eventually, we, we certainly want Java 17. And we, it was very good for us when we switched ci.jenkins.io from eight to 11 a few years ago, it gave us lots of experience and even better that we switch lower impact ones first, learn from those and then eventually get to the big one. Yep. Um, agent with both GDK 11 and GDK 17. That was my announcement because I'm motivated to do it even outside the priorities of our weeklies. Uh, I feel like we can gain a lot. And for me, it's a way to also give valuable insight if possible to Basil and to the community and to prove that it works. Um, okay. just. Can I let you just take the lead just two minutes, uh, Mark, to go to the notes? Sure. So do you want me to, sh to, uh, I'm not sure what you want me to do, Damien. Yep. Yep. Sorry. <clears throat> sorry. I, uh, th that's okay. Uh, I'm taking back. So let's get started on what we did. Um, a lot of issues, great jobs this week. Uh, so let's start one by one. So we had a request, I'm taking them on the order of the notes. So update analysis model and warning NG plugins on CI.Jenkins. So that request has been requested by Alex, not my fault. Uh, that's something I'm the origin of. The reason is that CI Jenkins IO right now is not um, managed as code for the plugin part. Mm. Uh, I, I was sure I started writing something, but I wasn't able to find. So there is an issue to be written to get started on putting ci.jenkins.io Docker image with its plugins. So that would mean building an image for the CI Jenkins IO the same way we do for infra CI, release CI. That's a pre-built image with an exhaustive list of the plugin with their exhaustive and pinned versions, and then we have a process to update them. Uh, I need to write an issue to explain what will be the downside of doing that, that will have an impact on the security process. So before jumping on implementing this, we first need to underline the advantage of that and think, oh, could we improve the, the security process so they can pre-stage and test the image prior to delivery? And oh, do we uh, fix the drifts that inevitably happen when a security uh, board is applied to CI Jenkins IO. Because if we upgrade to a version, an updated version of the core or a plugin, the, we need to build an image before these plugins or core is available publicly. That's the concept of staging. So then as soon as the security advisory is published, then CI Jenkins IO must be updated as soon as possible. Otherwise, someone will hack CI Jenkins IO by following the security public advisory. So time is the essence there. 
And then once we have an image that has been stored on a private registry and tested outside our usual public configuration system, we need a way to correct that drift to say, oh, I see that that image is not what you, you would expect by looking at the infra as code, which is public. So we need, let's say, an update clear or whatever automatic process that say, oh, we see that there has been a uh, security process automatically open a pull request for us. So we have Puppet disabled during that amount of time and of the security process. I don't want to burden the security team with the drift configuration. And then the time between they finish, they say, okay, CI is updated with the, the image. Then we need a way to correct the drift and go back to usual process. That's the main challenge on that issue. The advantage of doing so is that we could stage the image, test the image prior to deploying to CI Jenkins IO. And we could be we could then automate plugin updates and audit plugin updates on CI Jenkins IO. And moreover, we can provide easier rollback if needed. So, so yep. yep. So ju just to be sure I've understood. So the, the concept then is switch from the current current way of managing ci.jenkins.io as a as an operating system installed package and switch to use a Docker image. But then we have some way mm. to stage those Docker image updates um, privately before we're ready to publish them publicly. And on public public publishing, we it detects the drift and says, oh, we need to update. Exactly. Okay. Um, except the only, it's already a Docker image. Oh, it is it's already. The oh. It's, oh, it's the official one uh, with the tag LTS GDK 11. Okay, so it's so what it, so it's not it's not an image that has we're not building our our own image that includes the plugins and any other components job definitions etc. I see. Thanks. Thank you. So right now I've asked um, uh, Alex to open issues so we can at least uh, trace the changes they want uh, they want to do because. Uh, he wanted us to update some plugins on specific version. So Hervé took care of that. The goal is to have issues like this one until we are able to fully use a config as code with automated or auditable content. Is that clear for everyone? Because I failed to share that to Hervé. So, uh, so it ended him closing the issue initially. And it's my mistake because I did not share enough the knowledge. So I just want to be sure that it's clear for everyone to not have this happen again. Mm. Cool. Um, we had a remove my account uh, request. Uh, so usual. Uh, we had to prove the, that the person saying, hey, I want that account to be removed. We have to, to be sure that it was the right person. So we have to prove that they were able to control both the GitHub account and the Jenkins account before removing it, but they yeah, went fine. Um, remote access API on every non-CIGIO instance. Hervé, uh, do you want to explain it or do you want me to, to summarize? So, um... When uh, working on the embedded uh, build status badge, uh, uh, we discovered. Uh, we I discovered uh, the remote uh, access API path uh, are disabled uh, on ci.jenkins.io, but also on other uh, VM instances uh, managed by Puppet. So we, when Daniel uh, noticed it, uh, he asked us to, to unblock uh, this uh, remote access API on the private instance like certs.ci.jenkins.io. I'm interested. So I made uh, the VST uh, configurable. Uh, I, I've added um, a parameter to to block or not uh, the remote access API. And uh, if I did it, uh, I set it to false by default and true on CI. Uh, Thanks for the explanation. So great job. That was a <clears throat> lot of puppets. Um, 
you delivered until production with no outage on CI Jenkins IO. So congrats. Um, releases as infra meeting notes. Uh, so here it's it's an automated way to generate the notes uh, for this meeting that create releases. Um, really useful uh, that avoid uh, running a script locally. So thanks for that. That's helped a lot to prepare the meetings. Um, Docker Compose in Jenkins CIIO. So we had a plugin maintainer. <clears throat> we needed to run test container, which is a tool that is uh, driven by Maven or Gradle that runs during the integration test phase. Once you have package your application and you start running on the package application, a set of test harness, and it uses Docker or Docker Compose to spawn ephemeral databases, services, whatever, that connect to the the system under testing to run your test harness, which means um, they cannot use the default configuration where plugins are built and tested inside container on Kubernetes agent on CI Jenkins. So it was only a matter of using the correct label. But also, the thing is, uh, we had issues because it accidentally was using IRM machines. So we had to fix the labels of the IRM templates because a Docker IRM container, when you specify an Intel, uh, an Intel image and you are an IRM Docker engine, it doesn't work as expected. So the label has been fixed on CI Jenkins IO and the user confirmed it was working correctly on their own. So, so Damien, for clarity there, that means mm -hmm. that the label Linux mm -hmm. in this case really means Linux on AMD 64. Mm -hmm. it, and, and that's okay. Yeah. Semantics, yeah. semantics of the Linux label on ci.jenkins.io is it is absolutely. Uh, is there a place where we we can record that that would help me remember that? Because yeah. I think of Linux on ARM as the same Linux as on AMD on you know Intel as on System 390. But of course, we don't have a Linux label on the System 390 agent or on the PowerPC agent. So we're compliant with that. It's just I need to so remember it. The the thing is that the constraint is on the pipeline library. So the pipeline library drives what are the label used. So we have to update both the label collection and the documentation and the pipeline library at the same time. So there is some clearly some improvements because yes, Linux for me should not specify um, uh, uh, an, an architecture. So it behaved as I took it would behave. However, I didn't know that the build plugin library was using Linux while it should use Linux and AMD64 by default. Ah, okay. So 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 it's okay. Your view is it would be okay if we if we ultimately said sometime in the future Linux, the Linux label may in fact mean Linux on any architecture. Right so now we have a short-term practical problem that Linux is interpreted to mean AMD 64. And then we could adjust pipeline libraries to say, oh, Linux yep. and AMD 64 for those cases where it really requires it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the clip. Thanks for the question. Uh, we added Kevin to the Jenkins IO triage team, like we did for John Mark and Christine Weston recently, uh, for other uh, repository. But in that case, that will help Kevin to contribute and continue uh, working on the documentation SIG. So thanks for the people who did that one. Uh, we had a failure on the weekly last week, which was a consequence of the Kubernetes upgrade. So thanks for the uh, thorough uh, help of uh, Stefan and Hervé, we were able to fix that. That was uh, the same issue as we had, but we totally forgot that there is a persistent volume based on Azure file, which is mounted on the pod used to package and deploy the weekly release and the core releases. So the fix was literally the same and we were able to cover all the others volumes, persistent volume to ensure that the problem won't appear a third time. So thanks for your help, folks. It has been documented on the Kubernetes uh, documentation. Um, so thanks for taking that time, folks. 
Uh, removing Groovy tool configuration from Cert CI, that was a request from the security team. They want to remove the plugin. So we had to remove the, configura the tool configuration from the Gcask. So done, plugin removed and removed from Puppets. So sounds good. Yeah, we have Thanks to add uh, any generic tools now. But yeah, new pair. Okay. New pair request. Um, the, the scope is remove Groovy tool for the next. Yeah, yeah, this one is good. And he opened uh, Jenkins okay. Afra, uh, the Puppets pull request, but yeah. Okay. Thanks for cheering that then. <clears throat> so we still have some work to help him. Uh, grant permission to update center. I don't know which one is this. Um, it was closed without no further add-on. Okay. So someone did not read the documentation. Ah, okay, that's the world decommissioning things, okay. So Tim and Daniel took care of the, that contributor. The goal was to decommission a plugin. Uh, 502 proxy error when accessing pull request view for Jenkins CI, so that one is solved. So that was a tricky one. Uh, the root cause was uh, a plugin about the code coverage that was taking, that was either locking or taking some time. It has been fixed thanks to Uli's work. So many thanks for everyone involved on that. As soon as we deployed that new version of the plugin, uh, the page was printed immediately. So that fixed the issue. The 502 came from a timeout reach when trying to load the page. Um, I have no idea how to troubleshoot such error. Um, I know uh, that uh, we can take a thread dump like Daniel did. Uh, there is a page on somewhere on Jenkins where you can see the thread dump when doing such elements. But honestly, when I read the thread dump, I mean, that's, yeah, okay, I have a thread dump. I'm happy with that. So that one is, that's why I say it's tricky. Us Jenkins admin, uh, I don't think we have the knowledge required to understand this one. So what that means is that when there is a weird behavior, don't stay to ask the others, because as soon as we can raise such issue to people who knows, like Daniel and Uli, then uh, they could start acting. That's what Uli expressed, uh, saying if someone will report such problems. So I think there is a room for improvement there, but I need to know that I, uh, personally, I'm a long time run Jenkins user, but Knowing that, it's like magic for me, like, how could I know? So I don't know how we could improve any ideas welcome there, uh, because I feel the Yuli's frustration. I mean, having an issue telling him, hey, there is an issue with the plugin, help him as a plugin developer. But the road until being saying, oh, yeah, it's a problem with that plugin, for me, it's like magic. <laughs> so thanks for Daniel's help. But yeah, that means don't hesitate to ask for help when you see word behavior on Jenkins. That's the takeaway for me. I don't know if you okay. share it. Or... Is, is this one where in a, in a future day, we might be able to use historical traces to something that's doing observability to associate a plugin upgrade with a slowdown in, in some operations? I mean, right now we certainly cannot, but I'm, I'm wondering mm -hmm. if, if this is a place where Think about the the trace trace facility that the Open Telemetry plugin provides. Could could it be somehow correlated to a plugin upgrade and tell us, oh, we upgraded this plugin at that point, and that's where the traces got slower? Hmm. Um, if you have a regular process that reach in that case that URL, right? Then then yes, you can, because not only the build time are processed, but every get or post request going to all Jenkins endpoints. Right, but the problem then is we would have had to have been measuring that before the change and after. Okay, right, so okay. so the trace facility may not be the, the, the magic, magic solution that I hoped, thanks. However, if we have a set of ills check request, get request that we usually, I mean, the list of pull request main of the core, to check, oh, do we have Jenkins project built on that instance? That could make sense though. But yes, uh, not that easy. That could help, but not solve the problem. Uh, 
So Hervé, you closed the issue about PowerShell and PWSH. So the, as you express, as you expressed, uh, it has been done for the virtual machine built on Packer, which is our final goal. So it's done. Uh, it's hard to do it inside the Windows container and it's really time consuming. So we didn't implement it the Windows part because we don't have the issue now. We handled the issue with the, the developers that had the, the problem. And that leads to an update on the pipeline PowerShell documentation. So thanks survey for that. That will help a lot of users because I'm sure we are not the only one being beaten by the fact that Jenkins pipeline engine has two different instructions for PowerShell depending on the PowerShell core version. So by adding something on the documentation, that's the real outcome of that issue. Because on the infra, we don't have the issue anymore. I mean, we can change the pipeline library, we know it. But letting the rest of the users know that outside our bubble is really, really valuable. So thanks, Hervé, for taking care on this one. Uh, next one, we have uh, Docker Hub rate limiting. No more. We have been upgraded last week to a team, uh, team plan for Jenkins for Eval used on CI Jenkins IO and Jenkins CI Infra on uh, Infra CI and release. And I haven't seen any rate limiting since then. Um, so sounds good. Let's see if uh, the, when we will have a waves of a Debian updates, we'll see if it uh, face the new reality. Uh, finally, stop building pull request merges. So that one was closed, has been reopened and reclosed because on CI Jenkins IO, uh, we don't manage as code the job configuration. And some jobs were rebuilding pull requests even when the main branch was updated. So sometimes it's okay for a plugin that doesn't have uh, frequent merges, but on the Jenkins core or ATH or BOM, as soon as you update something on the BOM branch, each pull request is rebuilt immediately. Because the goal of a pull request is to build the virtual result of what would it be if it was merged, meaning the, the git commit merge of the head of the destination branch with the source. That's the default behavior of all CI of the world. And in Jenkins, there is by default that behavior that say, if either the source, so if you push code on your branch is changed, it trigger a new build, makes sense. If the destination change, you have to be sure that merging your change is still valid and striking that. But the thing is that for the BOM or ETH, it doesn't make a lot of sense and it costs us a lot of wasted cycles. So it has been disabled on one of our jobs uh that has that was done by team i think manually inside the ci jenkins io so another room for improvement being able to put all ci jenkins io job config under job dsl management will clearly help in these situations because we could audit what has happened and we could remove the plugin job config history and that one will be a great win so another uh, cis code uh, issue so this is for what we did. That's a lot of issues, not mentioning the one we are working on. Uh, I'm taking them on the same order. Do you have any question whatsoever on what we did uh, during the past, past week? Um, first one, download latest slash latest directory out of date. Um, we have to work on the update center scripts that are run regularly. There is a script on the PKG update center machine which every hour um, send the latest plugin core packages, JSON uh, changes, and send them to the mirror reference in Kubernetes, which is the mirror system. And then all the mirrors can start delivering these appliances. The thing is that the tool we are using is not AirSync and it's not a Linux system, it's a Azure file bucket, which doesn't support natively symbolic links. And the thing is that we construct the latest um, uh, path on, the, on update Jenkins Center or core stable latest. It's a sim link to the latest version. But when you send that in a system that doesn't support, the sim link is uh, undirected and it's a directory. So since we do not override the changes, we just add the new changes. 
once the folder latest has been created at the moment of time, it's never overridden. So we need to update that logic to say we need a specific things that will take the latest of each change plugin and core and update the directory and update the new directory on the remote system. We fixed at least the initial issue manually on the file system inside the Azure file to be sure that the core version is the latest as the user pointed out. There is still some work to do. I'm not sure uh, I will need help from uh, team Olivier or Daniel on that area uh, because I need them to, to tell me why it didn't avoid it that because it's explicitly avoided and I might need help from them. Uh, that might be postponed to after Stefan finish update center because the, we might be beaten by this, but right after. Um, CI Jenkins IO agent are very flaky. Uh, we had issue with the ATH. For me, that issue uh, is closable. Uh, so <clears throat> we had two kinds of issues, bomb builds and ATH. Bomb builds on Kubernetes. Uh, we had issues with a container or instances on Kubernetes. All the spot instances on the region uh, were consumed on AWS, leading to whatever uses a spot instance Kubernetes node on AKS or virtual machine spawned by Jenkins. These machines were reclaimed or not started, leading to a high rate of build failures. So thanks to uh, Hervé's work, uh, who um, uh, exchanges a lot with uh, people involved, uh, we removed the spot instances for the virtual machines, but only for the big ones that are used by the ATH, because these instances were, causing the, the were crossing the threshold. So now no more impact with the containers. And the, the additional cost from that is absolutely uh, sustainable given the rate of what we consume compared to the amount of builds that won't have to be retried. Good news, with this issue, we were able to fully test JC retry pipeline uh, thing. It worked because some build took seven hours instead of 30 minutes, but they went to completion so it works as expected. Developers don't have to retry builds. Uh, there were also a few minor things that we need to report, mainly EC2 plugin that should at least print a warning saying, hey, that is spot instance has been reclaimed by. At least that will help to diagnose in the future. So thanks, James, for the support on that area. For me, that instance is closable. I will take care of that after. Removable embeddable build status plugin. So almost there, Hervé. Uh, that trigger a new issue discussion. What should we use to replace? So the status right now is uh, we are experimenting quickly if we can have our own instance of shields.io that provide these badges <clears throat> in the same machine as CI Jenkins IO. That's the scenario for now. Uh, because then we don't need to put any token or and we can keep API, uh, remote API disabled on CI Jenkins IO to avoid script kiddies. So Hervé is evaluating that part and the batch pull request things is uh, ready to go. So the question is, can we quickly spin up shields.io and propose a replacement to the 160 whatever developers? Or do we have to tell them, I hey, sorry, uh, that feature won't exist anymore? So, and on a, on a related but not dependent story, yesterday in the Jenkins governance meeting, it was agreed that the embeddable build status plugin will be listed as, well, we sent a message yesterday inviting developers to adopt the plugin. Um, if we mm -hmm. don't receive an adoption request in the next two weeks, it will be suspended because it includes a proprietary component. So the, oh. the, the catalyst event was, hey, this plugin has a component that does not comply with Jenkins license requirements. And because of that non-compliance, um, it started this, shall we remove it? And I suspect I may ultimately be the one who adopts it actually, because there are cases where I need it. Unless shields that you works. Yes, if you have a shield intense, you don't need this plugin. Yeah, and in my we, case, I'm not ready to start a new Shields instance for my needs. 
Yes. Yeah, but it's it, the plugin. The there's in, there's valuable to retaining the plugin even even if we don't have it on CI. Yep. If your that, instance are publicly accessible, you don't need any plugin. You can already use uh, the public instance of child.io. Uh, but maybe it's a, it's a private private one. If you don't block the remote API, uh, access API uh, pass like we've done on ci.jenkins.io, your instance should be able to use uh, chills.io public instance out of the box. Ah, good. So, so if if we were if I were to adopt the plugin, I may want to take your knowledge, Hervé, and include it in the plugin documentation so that people know you don't have to use this plugin if you're hosting a publicly visible instance. Great, thank yes, you. Yes, but and even yeah, uh, in case of private instance, there is already uh, yeah we can discuss this later, but is. So thanks because that was a lot of hidden work. So thanks, Hervé, on that. Enable development Our integration. Vanity. Sorry? Yeah, I was seeing uh, for a little vanity button, but yeah, it was a great way to discover <laughs> other things. No problem. <laughs> um, Enable development integration in Jira. Uh, I failed to make this one go forward. Uh, I need to ping the right person on that area. Um, evaluate retry condition. There is one last plugin to be released before we close it. It's the Kubernetes plugin. So please don't upgrade the Kubernetes plugin on CI Jenkins IO until this issue is closed. Uh, Jesse is doing a last minute uh, fixes. And we are running a incremental version on CI Jenkins IO, which is not the latest. Hence, the please don't upgrade it. Uh, Mark, that one you started, but I think you missed time to work on it. Is there it's, anything we can do to help on that area? At this point, I don't think so, because I think the best thing is for me to document it in the runbook how to do it. And then later we add a new ticket that says, okay, now let's make it smarter. The, okay. the, the, the agent is running well for me in my private instance. It runs great. It's just okay. a matter I haven't done the configuration work for the public instance. W would you mind sharing an access to that machine with us? The goal for us won't be to take over, but to test if we can start a Puppet agent because we have played around during the past 10 days with puppets. And that could be interesting to know if we can install it even without the official package, like we do for oh. IRM, for instance. Yeah, happy to happy to grant access, you bet, absolutely. Okay, upgrade to Kubernetes 1.22. What's the status, folks, on this one? I haven't followed the last changes. Um, the pull request has been, the documentation pull request, uh, is ready to merge and uh, we should be able to close this issue so cool so second one right, closable uh, okay i'll take care of that once merge thanks for, for that uh, documentation i thought we had to to fulfill the, the 1.23 before closing no. the 1.25 oh yes yes good point yeah that's that's the, i was waiting for yeah, the merge yeah. of the of the documentation to start the new issue okay so we'll we'll close after this then. Thanks. Um, and finally, the big one: migrate updates Jenkins IO to another cloud. You you say it's a big one because it's mine. No. Uh, yes, because it involves no. a lot of technology pieces and it's a big instance. Okay, I thought you were uh, you you saw like it's some way. So if it's okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the status is you are working on doing the puppet part. So you started working on creating a role for that machine. That machine as a puppet agent is connected to the puppet master, which means on Oracle, everything is started, network, cloud resources managed by Terraform. And so now the next step is being able to install the same role as the update center uh, machine. And to so manage that... the volume. Okay, oh yes, and manage the volume. Perfect. That's something that did not exist on the 
previous machine because it only have one big volume with the system within. So slash on Linux is 1.2 terabyte. While on Oracle, you need a system, a root volume, which is 40 gigabytes and a data volume, which is clearly better because we can trash the virtual machine and start a new one, provision it. We still have the, the real data, the persistent data and the volume, but we need to be able to mount that volume correctly. So we have LVM things that might or might not be useful on Puppet. So that's a problem that Stefan is uh, working on. Uh, so congratulations on that one because yeah, Oracle Cloud wasn't the easiest one. By the way, that means I can start importing resources. So Mark, you have two running machines. Um, we can we can have one, but uh, if you can stop or merge the usages, unless we have some usages there, and then in that case, we will have to work on uh, adding that to Terraform, if it's okay for you. I, I can I can disk, I use those machines to test Oracle ARM instances, but I can certainly turn them off if it will help. No, no problem. If it's, uh, if it's uh, used, then let's keep them, but I will have to import and maybe move them. So I will have to bother you a bit about the usage just for the migration. The reason is because with Stefan, we discovered to apply security concern with Terraform management. We created some kind of namespaces, name compartment. And right now the existing machines are outside this compartment. They are at the root. So we will have to move some resources there that might have some outages. So for archives, we will manage it uh, on the other topic, but yeah, for the, your machine that might have some consequences. No problem if we need to just delete them, Damien. I'm I'm great with either. The they're just a way for me to test more broadly and deeply when I test Jenkins, but uh, I can certainly live without them. No 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 problem either way. Cool. I would Thanks. love to see the import if you can do that while I'm yep. around. Yep. Um, so, is there any objection to move all the issues of the current milestone to the next one? Oh, go ahead except the two that should be closable. Okay, uh, just to look at the new elements. So first, ah, I missed. Um, infra team sync next from the notes. Uh, right now, I don't see any emergency new issues. I have some to write uh, that I will mention uh, a lot there, but today it was too slow to fulfill that. Um, tomorrow, I will I will have some time uh, with Olivier uh, about the Datadog management. I hope it will clarify how it works, but we might have a task on the Terraform Datadog to change the templating instead of having one monitor, which is multi-valued with the 12 or 13 websites. We will use Terraform template power to generate 12 or 13 different monitors. So we can finally disable one or the other because it has been a pain on the past week. And the second part is trying to get away from these false positives that we keep receiving on PagerDuty and Datadog, which are mostly caused by Datadog probes running on prod public gates on Azure, the Kubernetes cluster, which has network issues which is the most probable cause. I cannot be sure, I don't have metrics or facts to confirm that, but as soon as the we use other probes, it works as expected and we don't have false positives. And also the most prominent one, which is update center showing a slow latency. I can reproduce that with a curl request from inside the container in that cluster, while I cannot reproduce on virtual machines outside the cluster. So my guts there say, okay, let's start by having more manageable Datadog, simpler Datadog, and then we can iterate. And for that, I need um, I need the help of Olivier. Uh, so the goal of that issue that will be written for that uh, milestone will be the takeaway of the discussion with Olivier. So you have actionable on your own. And the goal is I should not be the person doing that ideally versus the constraint we will have because some of you will be off on the upcoming days. Uh, CI plus uh, jobs as code. Do you have new issues that we should look on the upcoming milestone on your own before I go on the recent, most recent issues? 
one, two, three, okay. Um, I just need help from all of you folks, including Mark, about how to evaluate uh, Alex request about Java docs. So there is an issue broken tag lib docs. I'm not sure who we should contact to diagnose that because I have no idea how the Java doc works. I assume it's a set of files that we serve on a static web server. I'm not sure there is anything we can do except saying maybe the errors are HTTP 404, but I don't know how we could diagnose that. I am maybe Basil. Uh, so Jesse Glick, Jesse Glick <laughs> knows details of this. I've done some detailed work on it. Uh, if you want to just assign this one to to me for now, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I think this is a low priority thing. Uh, the it's. I'm glad that it's been reported, but the transition from Java 8 to Java 11, and again a transition from 11 to 17, tends to cause breakages in this area because the javadoc.jenkins.io site is somewhat of a special case. It started okay. originally as a um, single a single Javadoc site for Jenkins Core. We extended it to allow it to also be a Javadoc site for all plugins and for Jenkins components. But in order to do that, we had to do some link trickery, some link magic in, in, in its interactions. So, so there are some complications hiding here. And I okay. think it is managed as code, but it will need, need some research to go find it. Okay, so we'll ping Jesse. Uh, you have been assigned. I won't. Yeah, put just that on just the assign it to me. Thing. Let's not ping Jesse with this one. I think we've got much more valuable things to use his time with than than this particular thing. Okay, and we have the twin sister uh, request to have Javadocs for LTS versions. I assume it's the same area of how do we manage a multi-version Javadocs website with the Maven site generation. I have no knowledge about how to do that. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not entirely persuaded we want this. So I, I'll want some discussion on this one before we say yes, we should do it. Just because okay. uh, I don't. I don't know that I want people to. To well, yeah. Let's 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 bring some discussion to this one before I ever consider putting it into our backlog. Okay. So is there any action that we should do, except uh, maybe starting the discussion on the mailing list? I think I think that's that's a yeah, it's worth a discussion on the mailing list okay. because that's probably a place where people could the developer list could tell us, do they actually need access to Javadoc for LTS versions? Okay. Is there enough difference between LTS and weekly for them to care about having published Javadoc for, for LTS versions? Okay, fair. It's just I want to acknowledge both messages to Alex so he doesn't feel ignored or... Right. That, that's the only reason why I'm reassuring here. Okay, that's I will fair. give him answer to, to told him to, for, so for this one to start discussion instead because there is no actionable for, we cannot help him right now. And for this one, I will let you take care then. Okay. Were there other new issues or things for you? None for. Okay. Just one mention that uh, thanks, uh, Hervé and Stefan, for the huge work you did on Poupettes because I did some unplanned work, which is a foundational work to keep Poupette framework updated and cleaned up so we can operate efficiently. The fact that we were able to deliver a multiple elements in production during the two past days is a proof that we are growing on that area. The fact that Stefan has started autonomously on the puppet means that we are clearly improving compared to what we had Olivia and I one year ago. So thanks for your feedbacks. Keep giving me feedbacks. You're not annoying me, even if I'm grumpy. Liar. That's foundational work. That's really <laughs> foundational work. And during the weekend, I was ill, so I had some time to kill and I was able to upgrade all the games to the latest version, except Puppet, to the same version as production. So it's like four years of dependencies jump. And I was able to make it work on the unit tests. We will have to do it on production now. That will be the next step. I don't want to hear that French people are lazy when I hear a French guy working during his illness to do that kind of thing. 
So it's all for me, folks. Many, many thanks for your work and your help. Uh, keep keep that pace uh, for everyone going to long weekends. I hope you will you won't do the same as me. AG, I hope you won't be ill and take care of you. Is there anything else uh, you want to share, folks? Take care of the weather too, because it will be very hot. <laughs> I'm stopping the recording.